Hi, my name is Becky Rose, and I've had another question on After Forever After. This is uh, it's another one from Lord Mobius, and he asks, does your system have a D&D style alignment system? No. I think alignments are the most broken part of D&D. Don't get me wrong, I think at first they're great, but when you've been role-playing a couple of decades, <laughs> I've seen those same couple of characters that you know the, the alignment system you've got nine different alignment combinations is that thing it is um but you know if you remove the evil ones which okay remove the evil ones you're left with the neutrals and the goods so if you're playing heroes you've got three character archetypes to choose from if you, well personality archetypes uh what you'll generally find is that some players will always be in the, the good, there'll be a player, occasionally that's always neutral, there'll be a player in most groups who plays that evil character um, that wants to work against the party, and there will be a predominance of chaotic good. I think most sort of old school players just sort of gravitate to chaotic good because it allows them to have the beer and pretzel star play um, and still be the hero and so on and just not have to worry too much about role playing. Uh, I think it's broken. Uh, I much prefer what 5th edition did with the ideals, bonds, flaws and um, cracking was the other thing. There's four things. Ideals, flaws, bonds, mind blank. I don't have a character sheet here to look up. Um, Cracking, that's going to be so many comments. Don't, don't. I normally know. Um, <laughs> I much prefer that part of, of what DD did. And I think with the way I've done my character generation, which I'll answer in another video, um, I, I think you get a much better sense of who a character is. That, and, and that whole thing about alignment, <sighs> I, I don't think moral compass should be. The primary driving force of a character. And I, I think actually it's because the reason DD has alignment is because Gary Gydex was a Christian. To him, moral compass was a dominant thing in his mind, in the way he thought and in the way he thought other people thought. Because he had a moral compass of things he assumed were right and wrong. And you know, it's kind of what Christianity does, it's to polarise in, in that manner, or all religions do. Um, and I think, really, that that is something that is, is more evident in religious people that they have an alignment. But the thing is, all religious people believe they're lawful good, and they all believe other religions are, well, they're either neutral or evil, depending on which religion they're, they're referring to. So, that's... <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't... If you want to play a religious character, then by all means have an alignment. You will believe your lawful good. The rest of us, however, are more in the worlds of shades of grey. And I, I suppose it depends, you know, how strong is religion and influence in the game. In D&D, &D, religion is a big thing. There are, in most D&D &D settings, a lot of gods. Every race has at least one pantheon. Uh, if you read Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, most of the book is talking about gods. Uh, when I did my review on it, I, I believe the, the exact quote is, whoever wrote this had a religious hard-on. But you see, that's the world according to people who are extremely religious, so when they write that comes into their work. So it's, it's such a polarising thing, isn't it? Because at the same time, I don't want to say this isn't a game for people who aren't religious. Sure, have an alignment. You're religious, so you'll believe your lawful good. Other people will oppose you. They're not necessarily evil, but that's the word you use for them. <laughs> alignment has no place in role-playing. It's a black and white system of good, evil, true, false, and it doesn't sum people up. It's a belief system. Alignments are belief. And nobody believes they're working for the wrong people. 
you know, there's, there's not, uh, people aren't flooding out of America and Britain because their country went and launched multiple wars for the sake of the petrodollar. And yet that's what's happened. They're living in a country that acted in an evil manner, and yet they continue to live there, and in some cases believe they're living in the best country in the world, and yet that country acted in an evil manner. So when you do alignment absolutes, you're, you're painting this picture of the world that just isn't true, and it paints a picture of the way people act that just isn't true. Everyone thinks that they're on the right side. You know, even the most evil necromancer thinks what they're doing is for the good of everyone. They wouldn't, they wouldn't be categorised as lawful evil in their own mind. They're just branded as lawful evil by the people who think they're lawful good. And the necromancer will say, you're fools, you're... <laughs> that's, that's not the right thing to do. It's like left-wing and right-wing politics. Now, whichever political sphere that you think is the right answer, the other side thinks you're stupid, they don't understand why you don't get it. That's the problem with alignment.